Good morning, this is Jason Dean coming live at you again for another Film Fanatic Bonanza. So I've been on this tear lately and it's been super fun. I uh, mentioned in a couple of videos before that I've been going more often to buy movies. And it's been super cool. But I realized that I've been uh, accumulating this pile, literally a pile of movies that, well, I'll show you right now. Um altogether but over the past month or two or actually more than that i've been you know buying a lot of movies and i acquired uh, all of these movies that that i been wanting to get to and i just haven't and they've been just kind of piling up and now it's all these movies right here there's a ton of movies right here and there's also the other thing too is I I I don't really do a whole lot of coverage of like television shows because I know there's so many great television shows but I have a problem because the the length of them and I I don't know if it's my attention span but I get tired even if it's an incredibly well done show which there are the the quality of some television shows out there is astounding but even in the case of that, uh, or, you know, where the writing, everything is just so great. Uh, but some of these shows go on for multiple seasons. I have a hard time sticking with it because I, I get even really good shows. I get like this fatigue sets in and I'm just like, okay, I'm done. I'm exhausted and I don't want to watch it anymore. That's happened to me a bunch of times. Uh, one of the biggest ones is Game of Thrones. Like, I really love that show. I started, I've probably, uh, you know, I think I finished up a few years back. I finished like maybe the third or fourth season. And then I just got, you know, I got sidetracked watching other things, but then I just got uh, exhausted. And I, and it's been on, you know, for years since then. And it just ended, I think, uh, two years ago, maybe less. And I know there's, you know, season after season to still watch. And I'm just like, oh, you know, it's just, I want to watch it, but then it's just daunting. And I'm, and it's just weird. Uh, fatigue sit, sit, sits in and I'm just like, I don't know. And, uh, you know, another example of that is uh, a show that I really liked a lot with Idris Alba called Luther. Another really great show. But that went on for quite a few years, and by the third or fourth season, I really loved that show. But I was the I had this overwhelming sense of fatigue that set in, and I was exhausted, and I just felt like, you know, it's kind of like that. I don't know, like a, a social situation, a social situation. I can kind of compare it to. It's kind of like if you have a friend over, or you go over someone's house and they're a close friend of yours and you guys like have talked maybe a lot beforehand or you know uh you know each other pretty well but they invite you over their house like they like say they invite me over to their house or i invite them over to my house and and you go over and it's fun and you have all this you know you have a lot of the same interests but there could be that situation of where, okay, it's getting late or obviously this other person has like some other things that they need to be doing or they want it that they need to get to or they're just tired. And that other party or myself just doesn't, you know, when, just doesn't know when to like say goodnight and say, okay, we'll talk to you soon. There's been, you know, we've all had that experience of where, you know, I've been over or like I've had, you know, occasionally had someone come over or stop by and they're really great and I like them a, a lot, but I kind of have to go and do other things or I'm just kind of like wanting to be by myself or, or maybe it's too late and, but that person just doesn't know when to say when and to kind of leave and to like, and then it gets awkward and then you're kind of standing around and it's like, and then I've had that situation too, where I've done it, where I've gone over to someone's house and I'm that person and I'm kind of like, well, we're hitting it off and we're kind of like hanging out, but, uh, you know, I kind of want to stay and then I don't 
cue into that and and then it just gets awkward i kind of feel that way with you know where you overstay your welcome and i kind of feel that happens to me with television shows especially when they're you know they go on for multiple seasons it reaches a point of where i'm kind of tired and i'm checked out and i don't really want to do it anymore so i just need to like go away and then it and then i end up losing interest in continuing it when it gets to that point it's really weird uh, another really great show that that's happened with is Breaking Bad, an amazing show, one of the best t- television shows ever. Same thing. I love that show. I made it to the third or fourth season, and it's been on for quite a few years. I reached a point where I just was cashed out, and I just can't watch it anymore. And I have no interest in finishing it. You know. When it comes to other series, like my favorite show of all time, True Detective, I can literally, because it's the short, it's a short season. It's like, you know, kind of like a big multiple part movie, I kind of feel like. It's one season, it's about, I don't know, nine episodes. But it feels like whenever I watch that series, and I watch, I actually watch that series quite a bit, I can watch it right through pretty much, or break it up within three or four days. But I can watch it, and I'm just like, totally in, into it totally invested in it i'm never like oh okay looking at my watch and being like okay i think i think i need a break i just totally can immerse myself for the the entire experience another series that i really love that i think is very similar to how it's how how it's done basically is the the unabomber the the story the the series the season about Ted Kaczynski. That is such an amazing series. And that same kind of thing. I don't own that. And I've only seen it once. But I can watch that right through. I can, you know, and it's like one and done. Where it feels like there isn't this generic, stereotypical kind of cliffhanger thing that's used. That's kind of, I always feel it's tacked on. Even if the writing is impeccable and the show is 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 really well done, there's still because it's the format. There's still always that cliched thing of where, okay, you gotta tune into this fiftieth episode, sixtieth episode to get the answers. But then you get more, you leave with more. You know, you you get more questions, and 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 it just goes on and on and on. The short series, like I said, True Detective. Uh, and the, the uh, manhunt, the, the story of, of the Unabomber, it's it's like uh, real concise, real, and and it, and it has a beginning, a middle, and an end, and it, and it's conclusive, and you, and it's and it's done, and you feel like it's complete, and so it's really tough. And I have like included in this stack of movies, I also included some television shows because I have. I have bought some television shows. Uh, the Wire is one show. I bought Six Feet Under. Uh, you know, I have quite a few. I have a couple of comedy shows. Mr. Show with Bob and Dave, which is like pretty much my favorite comedy show, which I will watch. Um, but I was going to include that with this whole watching uh, scenario, but uh, all these television shows that I have, but I... And now I'm like, no, I'm going to just do the movies because I'll eventually probably watch them, but it's going to be too long. Like, I don't know if I really want to watch 70 hours of The Wire as amazing. That's one of my favorite television shows. I think it's great, but it's so long and it's so fucking goes on forever. So it's just me and, you know, my head is up my ass, but... But what I've been doing lately is I've been making it a point to watch all these movies that I've accumulated because I don't want to like have this, uh, you know, have this graveyard of all these movies that I own and I haven't watched because that's easy to do. You get inundated. And uh, I see that a lot sometimes on YouTube, even with guys that I really love, where they'll do these big, uh, you know, Blu-ray hauls or DVD hauls of movies that they bought and... A lot of the times, which I'm always surprised, but a lot of the times they, a lot of the movies that they talk about, they, they have, they haven't seen. 
uh, or they've only seen once. And they just buy all these movies and then they kind of put them in storage. For me, it's like, no, I'm buying these movies because I love movies and I love watching movies. And I'm a film fanatic. And, and I try to only do shows on this channel of movies that I've seen you know, many times or multiple times or at least once. And it, that part of part of it always, when I see that on YouTube with even the guys I really love or and le- look up to and and I've learned a lot, it always irritates me. So I'm I don't want to be that be that person. So that's what I'm doing, and it's been awesome. The other thing that's funny about doing it this way, which is a new way for me, because typically, like anybody else, you know, it's like music or a book. Um, probably more so with like movies or, or, you know, um, or, or music, especially music, you know, you you wake up, uh, you know, and throughout your day, you're in a certain mood and you're like, Oh wait, I kind of want to hear this band or I kind of want to hear that. Or like, you know, you come home from work and you're like, I'm going to put a movie in and I'm kind of in this mood. Maybe I want to see a suspense movie or maybe I want to see a horror movie. And then there's always a time of where, that used to happen to me a lot, and it's a normal thing where, like, I come home, and I, you know, I have a pretty large selection of movies, and and it's grown quite a bit. But there'll be a time where I'm like really eager to watch a movie, and and then I'm like sitting in front of my movies trying to pick a movie, and I'm wicked and decisive. I can't, for the life of me, pick anything because I want to watch all of them. But then I'm like, no, I got to make a choice, and then I can't make a decision because it's like, oh, wait, I want to do this. I want to do that. But the interesting thing about doing it this way is like, no, I already have a set plan. And there's no, if I'm going to watch something, there's no questions about, or there's no, um, I won't get myself into that situation of being indecisive. I just automatically have something to watch. So in that way, it's really awesome. So Kind of an interesting nerd. It's a it's a very nerdy thing to talk about, I, and I realize, but it's kind of an interesting for me. It's kind of an interesting um, two degree experiment uh, of doing it, because you know, like another example of that was I was thinking the other day, maybe next weekend or coming up, I'll I I was thinking, oh maybe I'll go to Bull Moose again, and then I was like, no, I don't want to. I do want to go there. It's my favorite place. But then I found myself being like, no, I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go and spend that money until I at least watch all of these movies because I'm just going to get more and more backlogged. I want that experience to go there to be fun and and uh, kind of magical. You know, like going there where I'm like legitimately craving and hungry for some new material and new, and new movies and new music. So I don't want to like, you know go there when I have this other pile of things that I'm trying to watch or that I want to watch and that I need to get to. I want it to be, I want to, I don't want that experience to be devalued or to be not as exciting. So that's, yeah, that's just kind of a weird thing of how I am around movies and, and, uh, and things like that. Same thing with music. I, you know, it's the same idea. Like I try to like, you know, you, you buy a couple albums and maybe you only listen to them once or twice, or you buy a few albums and you barely listen to them. I try not to do that. I try to be, you know, if I, if I like the album or the band, I'll try to like spend time with it and listen to it and absorb it because you can get inundated with that, you know, uh, the same way. So yeah, it's, it's a, it's actually been pretty awesome doing it this way. And all of the latest reviews uh, that I've been doing have been from this combo pack that I bought at Goodwill. And uh, I've been just really fucking enjoying these movies. It's been really awesome. I don't usually, like I said, I don't usually buy DVDs. I still buy them every now and then. um, Especially if I come across a good quality movie. One of the coolest ones I bought, which I haven't watched, which I do have to... Actually, now that I think of it, I have to add to the list... But I bought a Criterion collection of Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas by Terry Gillian, the movie about Hunter S. Thompson, which is an, a, an amazing movie. 
I've seen that many times, but not in years. But I bought uh, a beautiful edition of that movie on DVD uh, that comes with all of these bonus features. But it's DVD, but it's a Criterion collection. It's really nice. Beautiful artwork, packaging, the whole thing. So I bought that. So I still do buy DVDs. And now that I uh, just thought of that, I have to add that to the collection because I'm going to end up forgetting about it. But anyway, with this series, I bought, uh, you know, 10 movies for three bucks. Like, and it's been really awesome. Uh, been blown away by some of these movies. And it comes with two discs, you know, the other disc I'm watching right now. Uh, and... There's been a few movies on here that I've never seen, and they're all like killer horror exploitation movies. Especially the there's some really kick-ass slasher movies on here. Uh, the first movie I watched, which I did a show on, is Trancers, which is this kind of wacky sci-fi exploitation movie from the '80s, star starring Helen Hunt, and I'd never seen it before, and uh, it's it's uh, awesome. I totally love that movie. Uh, a huge fan. I never seen it before. It's totally wacky and and uh, bizarre and ridiculous. Uh, just amazing. And it came out in like 1984, I think. The transfer of that movie is is okay. It's not the best quality, but it's good. Uh, it's it's decent. And definitely happy with with getting it on this on this package, this combo pack. And that would definitely be a movie I would, uh, if I come across it on Blu-ray, I would, I will definitely snag it up. I mean, it's an awesome movie. That was the first time viewing. And I did a show on that. Um, another movie, uh, and also one of my favorite movies, a movie that, and, and, and a franchise, I think that is just kick ass, but it had, it has the original, uh, puppet master on here. The transfer of that movie on this disc is really good. Uh, it's it's like it's pretty much like high quality DVD. Really great transfer. Uh, I love that movie to death. I think it's one of the best. You know, quirky, weirdo, super low budget, campy. You know, horror exploitation movies that came out in the eighties. The one of the cool, the coolest thing about it, I hadn't seen it in years. I actually really love the the entire franchise for the Puppet Master movies. Uh, they're just so fun. Uh, but the coolest discovery that I had was watching the Puppet Master. It's been quite a few years since I've seen the original. Um, was realizing that David Schmoller was the director of the Puppet Master and also for many of the movies in the franchise. And I think there's like six or seven movies in the franchise. And David Schmoller is the director and writer for my favorite slasher horror exploitation movie of all time. The Tourist Trap, which came out in uh, 78. That movie is just gone so crazy and and so terrible, but so amazing at the same time. That's my favorite, hands down, horror exploitation movie slash slasher movie. And I was super excited that he directed Puppet Master too. I totally didn't realize that. So I watched that again the other night. I did a show on the Puppet Master and uh, amazing, amazing movie. I need to buy that on Blu-ray at some point. Like that will definitely be one. But again, the transfer of that on Blu-ray is uh, I mean, uh, the transfer of the Puppet Master on this DVD uh, package is really good. It's really good quality. So I'm really happy with that. Uh, the other movie that I watched that I could not, uh, or actually no, I should say before I get to that one, then the other movie that I watched is this. Freaking awesome Canadian slasher movie that I had never seen before, and it's amazing. Uh, it's now like one of my favorite slasher movies, and that is a movie that came out in 1982. This Canadian slasher movie called Curtains. The transfer of that on Blu-ray uh, on DVD is actually pretty good too. Uh, it's a little bit grainy and it's a little bit rough at times, but it's actually really pretty good quality for what it is. I had never seen Curtains before. And again, slash the slasher genre is my favorite, and I was enamored with it. It's such a great movie. I did a big show on that, so I was really, really psyched about seeing that for the first time. And I had never heard of it before. When I put it in, it was funny. 
because there's like five movies on each disc. When I when I when I first pressed play, I was assuming it was gonna be like kind of a uh, a terrible like '90s horror movie. Uh, but it wasn't. It was like wicked old school, and like right away, I could tell that this was going to be a kick-ass movie. It just had this. It just had that uh, classic kind of slasher vibe to it, and and it was, and it was awesome. And that curtains will definitely be a movie I will, uh, if I come across it in my travels or on my travels, I will definitely buy it on Blu-ray because it's a, it's an awesome movie. And now. Today's show, I'm watching uh, Prom Night, which is easily, I've seen, I saw, I've seen Prom Night uh, a bazillion times, and it's funny, that was a slasher movie that I grew up watching as a kid, like, that was on cable all the time, it was back when, you know, Jamie Lee Curtis was coming off of Halloween, and she kind of became known as a scream queen, so she did a series of all of these you know, super low budget horror exploitation slasher movies. And, uh, you know, she was the, the queen of that whole period from like the late seventies and eighties. And, uh, I used to see, watch prom night all the time as a kid back, you know, used to rent it on VHS. Always loved that movie. Um, and then I had not seen it in years and years and years. And then I think it was last year I rented it at uh, Opera House Video, they had a, uh, a DVD collector's edition of it. And I watched it, and I'm like, yeah, god damn, I had seen this movie in years, and it's so damn good. So awesome. And and then I watched it again last night, and I even I enjoyed it even more. It's it's I think it's definitely, you know, if you have your top five or top ten, but I'd say your top five, you know, top five American... You know, you, like you take your, you know, what are your classic slasher movies? And I think Prom Night is definitely one of them. It's it's such an awesome movie. It's so entertaining. It's got uh, great kills, really great suspense. The killer is awesome. Uh, the music is great. There's all this like cheesy disco music in it. It's super campy and ridiculous. Uh, it's such an awesome movie. And I think it's Jamie Lee Curtis's other than probably Halloween, the original, you know, probably her best role. I think it's an awesome movie. It was directed by Paul Lynch uh, and came out in 1980. And it's the epitome of the American exploitation slasher experience. Totally, totally awesome. The transfer of Prom Night on Blu-ray is really, really great. And it was directed by Paul Lynch, who's also Canadian, a Canadian filmmaker. It's it's amazing how many films I've been discovering and realizing how huge and also how important in the 70s and 80s the Canadian horror exploitation scene was. So many great movies came out of Canada in the in the mid to mid to late to early 70s through the 80s there's so many great movies that have come out of there and i've been discovering that more and more and i didn't realize that prom night was also a canadian movie and it's awesome it's like one of the most you know in the world of slasher movies it's probably one of the most popular or one of the most well-known movies but i think it's truly great it's truly great i've seen interviews with jamie lee curtis and she'll talk about you know, her career, especially after Halloween. And she'll kind of poo-poo a lot of the movies that she's done. And, and I remember seeing this one interview where she talked about Prom Night. And she she just, you know, because, you know, it's an exploitation movie. It's a slasher movie. It's trying to capitalize on, like, that movie was trying to capitalize on the momentum of, like, Friday the 13th and Halloween and, and those kinds of things. It was trying to make a commercial, um, you know, splash. And because of that, she kind of, you know, trashes it a lot. But I think because of that aspect, it makes the movie even cooler because they just did not have the 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 high level or their high, the high the level of production. They didn't have the you know the the budget to really pull it off at times. But I think because of that, it 
added to the charm or it adds to the charm of the movie. And I think Prom Night's awesome. I I think it's it's definitely one of the most essential if you're a fan of slasher films, I definitely feel it's 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 one of the one of the essential movies that you need to watch or to have in your collection. And getting back to the whole Canadian explosion, I mean the most probably the the most important movie that came out of Canada seventy two is Black Christmas. I did a big show on on that film. I interviewed one of the actresses from that, Lynn Griffin. She was awesome. Amazing movie, a masterpiece. Uh, that really set up the blueprint and presented the blueprint of what slasher films would be. Slasher films are my favorite movies, and watching these movies, Curtains and then Prom Night, I just get, I turn into this little kid. I'm super excited watching them and just pumped up. So you have Black Christmas. You you also have another movie that came out that I really really love. I've done I did a show on it a while back called The Siege. Such an awesome movie. Such an awesome movie. I never hear that movie talked about, and I think it's one of the greatest horror Canadian uh, Canadian horror exploitation movies ever. So damn good. I did a show on that last year. Of course, the work of David Cronenberg, one of the greatest directors ever, still going strong. I did a film review of Shivers, which was his debut as a filmmaker. Such an awesome movie, so gritty, and early on in his career, he was definitely a uh, an exploitation director. Um, and probably probably the most popular uh, Canadian slasher movie is My Bloody Valentine, which is a masterpiece. One of the greatest slasher movies ever. One of the greatest horror movies ever made. I did a big show on that last year. Another Canadian masterpiece. And then Curtains and and also Prom Night. I mean, so many movies that were just killer exploitation movies that came out within a 10-year time span. And there's many other films also, but Prom Night is such an awesome movie. And... Again, I am a sucker for the atmosphere of a movie. And this movie really has an incredible atmosphere to it. Paul Lynch, uh, you know, he's a famous, pretty famous for what it is, exploitation director in Canada. And I'd probably say Prom Night is probably his most, fa- probably his most popular he also did The Keeper in 2004, Humongous in 1982, Flying in 1986, No Contest uh, 1996, Taken Too Far Away, The Christmas Switch. He made quite a few movies. Uh, I think he's still I think he's still actually making movies. Frozen with Fear in 2001, Blindside in 1987, Drop Dead Gorgeous in 91, Cross Country in 1983. Uh, so cool. Um, yeah. But I can't recommend Prom Night enough. I I need to buy that on Blu-ray and get a 4K version of it because it's, you know, being that slasher films are my favorite. Uh, it's an essential um, holy book for that genre. So, yeah, can't can't say enough. It's, you know, an iconic movie and... You know, I found myself after watching it last night, uh, loving it even more, and just realizing how, just for what it represents in that style of the slasher horror exploitation, it's a it's a masterpiece, and it's you know one of my favorite roles by Jamie Lee Curtis. So yeah, this is Jason Dean. So please check out Prom Night, such a killer movie. If most people have probably seen it, but it's definitely worth seeing again. So thanks again for your support and we will see you next time. Peace.